infographics are certainly the rage for presenting information in a visual way. And here's the infographic we're going to create in this project about blood donation. And you can see we present several different items together on this one document, but in a very visual, impactful way. We're going to use a pattern to create our 3 in 100 and 62 in 100. And then we'll draw the pie shape here for 2 thirds and 1 third and add in some shapes for female and male. We're going to use some vector clip art that's in the public domain of transfusion, but we're going to add two more arms to it and change the skin colors. And then a couple more images that are public vectors. And then this hourglass comes from the sh custom shapes tool and it is part of the legacy shapes in the objects category. And then we'll add in some text. I'm not going to do this step by step. I'm going to give you a couple tips to help you do this project, including creating our repeating pattern, how I colored these using layer styles, how I created the pie chart, and how I modified this EPS vectored image. Let's jump over to Photoshop. I'm going to start with a new document in Photoshop that's for print purposes, 8.5 inches wide by 11 inches high at 300 ppi. And to assist us in our design, let's go to the View menu and choose Guides, New Guide Layout. And I'm going to set it up for three columns that will help us in our design. So I want the number of columns to be three. I'm going to do a gutter of 75 pixels. And then for our margins, we'll do 150 pixels all the way around. So working in inches, 150 pixels would be a half inch for the margins, and 75 pixels for the gutters would be a quarter inch. Click OK. On our infographic, we have the 100 people. So we have our 100 men in five rows of 20 each. We have our 100 people in five rows of 20 each for the icons, across over two columns. If we use a rectangular marquee, you can see that that's about 1,475 pixels in width. So I'm going to divide that by 20. And according to my calculator, that's about 75 pixels per icon. So I'm going to go to the File menu and choose New. And we're going to create a new image that is 75 pixels wide. And let's go, we'll go 200 high for now. We'll create. And then I'm going to go to the custom shape tool. I'm going to find the man icon. This is going to be in the, and let's just drag our figure. I'm going to have it centered. It doesn't matter what color we make it. I'm just going to make it black so it kind of stands out. I'm going to turn the background off so it's transparent. And I'm going to shorten the height a little bit. We'll crop that. Edit. Define pattern. And I'm going to call this man icon. Let's go back to our image. Just going to create a large rectangle. Make sure we go to a new layer. Edit, fill. I'm going to fill with a pattern. I want to find that man that I just added. We get a whole bunch of them, and that's fine. We want five rows of 20. So I'm going to get rid of this first partial man over here on the left, just selecting to delete. And same with, with the top row. It's His head has been decapitated. I want five rows. And I'm going to count out 20. So easy way to do this is use your ruler guide. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. There's 10. Let's do another ruler guide. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. There's 20. So then I'll eliminate all those to the right. Take the Move tool. And we'll move these into place. 
me get rid of those extra ruler guys I just created so I don't get confused. So it fits pretty well in the comment. It might be a little bit wide. I can transform and scale that slightly. That's right where I want it. Now, here's how I'm going to color these. I'm going to duplicate this layer twice. We're going to call the top one Red Men, Green Men, and Black Men. I'm going to take the red men. I'm going to go to the layer of styles. Let's do a color overlay. We'll make them red. But I only want the first three. So take my Arcturian Marquee tool, select those three, and let's create a mask. The green men do the same thing. Color overlay. Let's make these green. And then I want 62. So I'll select those two. Hold down the shift key. Now I'm going to add to my selection those 60. And then hold down the Alt key, and I could subtract the first three from that selection. And we'll make a mask. Now there's a little bit of the black showing through on the other layer, so I'm going to make a mask there as well. We can just select the top three rows, hold down the Shift key. Select those two. I'm going to do the inverse. And create a mask. I'm going to take those three layers and let's put them in a group. And we'll call that group 100 men. One nice thing is you can go back to and use this for another project, just changing the mask and the color overlays. Next, I'll show you how to create the pie chart for our gender differentiation of the blood donors. I'm going to create a new layer. Let's just call this gender. Maybe gender pie. I'm going to take the elliptical marquee tool. I'm going to come over to the first column, hold down the shift key, and just draw a circle. So between the margin and the gutter of the columns, I'm going to take a black four color and go to edit, stroke, and I'm going to stroke this as three pixels on the inside. And then I'm going to find the center of that and take a ruler guide. They'll kind of snap into place if you have snap turned on. So there's my center. I'm going to take the line tool and I want to choose pixels on the options bar and again a weight of three. And from the center, I'm going to hold down the shift key and drag up. I'm going to drag outside of the circle because the line will only be drawn inside of my marquee. So I'm going to come back to the center and drag down and to the right. And you'll notice in the information, I'm seeing the number of degrees for the angle of that line. I'm going to take it to about 33. Let go. I can do Control D to deselect. I'm going to get a very light pink color and fill in the left side of my pie chart. And then do a very light blue color. Fill in the right hand side. And finally, I'll go to the custom shape tool, find the woman shape. 
here I'm going to make this a shape. Draw that icon on the left. Now let's color that a darker pink. And then I want to do the same thing with the man icon. Drawing it on the right and we'll make it a little bit darker blue. I'll take those last three layers that I created and put those into a group. And we'll call that gender pie chart. I did have a question from a student on a previous project about how to move everything in the group without moving individual layers. And the trick there is you want to make sure you're moving the group and not any of the layers inside. If you move the layers inside, they're going to move separately. Make sure you have the group selected, take the move tool, and you can then move that group around. Next, let's modify the blood transfusion graphic. We're going to use some clip art of the blood transfusion into this arm, but we're going to add two more arms and change the skin colors of those arms, add the drip lines to those arms. And notice that the original clip art's a little bit less than the distance between the gutter and the margin of my third column. And that column's about 700 pixels. From the file menu, I'm going to open up my blood transfusion graphic. It's an EPS encapsulated postscript. That's a vectored format. I'm going to say open. And I can reduce the size since this vector comes in very large. Now my column is about 700 pixels wide. So let's make this, oh, let's try 625 for my width. I want it to be a little bit less than the width of the column. And then I will select the top portion of this and crop it. Drag that image down so I can see its layer and then the document that I'm working on and simply drag over to the document. And I'll move it into place. Might still be a little bit wide for what I intend to do. I'm going to just simply scale this down a little bit more. Probably about 600 pixels is going to be, in this case, just about right. Let's zoom in. I'm going to close my original EPS image. Don't need that anymore. I'm going to bring a ruler guide over to right along the edge of those two extra lines coming out. We're going to use those. Take the rectangular marquee tool. I'm going to select an area just inside of those two lines. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. I'm going to get rid of the center line. I don't need that. I just want those two. I'm going to create a new layer via copy. I'm going to hide the transfusion graphic so we can see that layer there. Go to the edit menu, transform, scale. Hold down the shift key. I'm going to grab that bottom center handle and just pull down. Press the enter key to accept. Let's turn our image back on. I made them plenty long and we can cut these off a little bit later. I'm just going to hide that layer for now and get rid of the marching ants, control D. Let's take the lasso tool and I'm going to lasso the arm. Make sure I'm on the layer of the transfusion image. In fact, I'm going to name that layer transfusion. I can name this layer drip line. So that transfusion layer, I want to copy that, go to the layer menu and choose new layer via copy. I'm going to position that so that the drip line is along my ruler guide that I created. You might need to nudge it. We can always nudge it a little bit later if we need to. Then I want to do another new layer via copy. We'll bring this one lined up with that drip line. I'm 
Next I'll take the paint bucket, change my fill color, and we'll change the skin colors that way. Let's turn our drip lines back on, see how they line up. Pretty good. On that layer, I'll delete. And delete. And then come back to the arm and simply nudge it to where it lines up really well with the drip line. And there is our modified graphic. I'll name those two layers arm three and arm two. And then I'll take those four layers and create a group. And we'll call that one transfusion. Your remaining task then is to take those concepts, recreate this infographic, the hourglass here came from the sh custom shapes. These are two images from vectored clip art, and you may need to get rid of some of the white areas, overlap these two, add in your text, and you've created an infographic.